What's up guys, Coach Nate here, excited to talk about the Hoka One One Mach 3. Before I even do, I have a little admission. This is my first pair of Hoka shoes that I've ever run in. And I got to take them through some medium distance runs, some faster paced runs, some longer runs. And I'm excited to share whether or not, hey, am I now a Hoka convert or not? But before we get into those things, first impressions, running in them, my final thoughts, we first gotta get into the specs. Hey, before we get into this review, did you know that we put out three videos a week and one gear review video a week? Well, if you didn't, you know now, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and you can get tips on strength, nutrition, running form, injury prevention, as well as insights into really cool shoes like this. Now, Hoka claims that Mach 3 is their you know, sh one tool wonder. Their shoe that is really good for that person that wants to do everything, that jack of all trades, from going from long runs to easy runs to being responsive and the speedy stuff. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. This shoe impressively weighs only eight ounces. It has a 27 millimeter stack height in the rear, 22 millimeters in the front, leading to uh, a respectable five millimeter heel toe drop. It has a pro fly midsole and it combines to being a little bit cushier in the rear and a little bit firmer and more responsive in the midfoot that definitely shows up in the performance of the shoe as I'll talk about later. The uh, upper is this close weaved jacquard mesh that is, uh, it's pretty firm and Hoka did this on purpose. They wanted something that would give you a little bit of a firmer forefoot in the shoe. This thing doesn't really flex that much at all, which I think could both be a blessing and a curse as I'll talk about later. And uh, as I mentioned, it is this jack of all trade shoe that can do everything. So let's take this guy for a run and find out. So my first impression of the Mach 3 is that it doesn't seem to be as Hoka-y as I thought it would. And what I mean by that is, is the, the Hoka shoes initially came out, they just looked like it was <laughs> all sole and very little shoe. They were these like giant platform shoes. I don't know if it's just trickery by design or they've actually lowered the stack height a little bit than uh, years past. Uh, it just seems like more of a regular shoe that you would go out and wear in. Then you pick this thing up and you're expecting it to be a little bit bulkier than it is, but it is just surprisingly light. As we said, only eight ounces, which just, again, kind of boggles the mind. There can just be so much shoe here with so little weight. Uh, other first impressions, um, I always like the built-in tongue. The tongue doesn't slide around from one side to another. I've got a pair of mountain bike shoes. I know this is sort of off topic that the tongue always slides to the side, drives me nuts. I, so I love it when this built-in tongue stays nice and firm and solid. Uh, laces felt a little nylon-y at first. That's the first time I went running with them. They, uh, they came untied, but just after a little while they were fine. You know, I'll get more into this later, but when I first put these shoes on, you know how sometimes they come, shoes come laced up and they're a little tight. My shoe felt like it was, my foot was like this. It just didn't have a lot of breathing room. So I really had to loosen up the uh, laces in the forefoot to slide that foot in where I felt a little bit more comfortable, which is something that I didn't necessarily think about with Hoka before, but they do seem to be a little bit on the narrower last side. And then finally, a uh, color. When I saw the green, it just, it reminded me of uh, like Tums, you know, those things you pop, uh, or that kind of light Bianche bike color, where I was just like, uh, this is okay. But then I looked online and I saw the other option, which was this crazy Spider-Man blue red combo. And I was like, oh, I'm glad I have the green. And hey, if you just read my uh, color choice, wait, well, hey, this is my review. You can let me know what colors you like down in the comments below. So color choices aside, what's it like to actually run in these things? You know, as a coach who really cares about your mechanics and making sure that you're in shoes that make you run better as opposed to just make you run lazier, I've had a little chip in my shoulder with Hoka in the past. I've just didn't think that if you had a knee injury and all of a sudden you did, you did nothing else to help yourself except run in a pair of shoes with a big fat 
thing underneath your heel and all of a sudden your knee doesn't hurt as much. I don't know if we're really solving a problem versus kicking that problem down the road. And when I was expecting to run in a Hoka, especially with so much stuff underneath, it's just gonna be this like soft, cushy, mushy experience. Well, not at all. Not only when I put these things on, that just lightweight shoe, it just felt like I had nothing on my feet but just how responsive it felt. You know, I warm up down this little hill and uh, initially I just like the combination of where they've put a little bit extra cushioning and where they've put a little stiffer midsole. This heel has just a little bit more cushioning, so if I'm running with a slightly lower cadence, my feet are just on the ground a little bit longer. I just appreciated that. It was nice waking up, running down a slight hill the first time, not feeling super jarring. But as soon as I got into the flats, as soon as I started doing pickups and doing hard workouts, I really appreciated not getting lost in all that cushion either. This uh, under midsole has some, has some oomph, it has some response, and I felt really quick and snappy. Quick thing, I also love that this shoe only has a five millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. Uh, it makes it more of the flatter shoes. It's one of the things, the variables that I've liked from the minimalist uh, shoe debate that raged of years, years of past. And uh, it just makes me feel a little bit more neutral in my gait for better running mechanics. <laughs> Now the first few runs, it did take me a few times just to figure out the right kind of lacing tension. As I mentioned, I slipped my feet in, I went for a run, and I immediately found my feet just bound up. And I think that's just a combination of a narrower last and uh, an upsole that is a little bit stiffer. And Hoka did this on purpose. They wanted something that gave you a little bit more structure in the midfoot and support in the midfoot. For me, with my wider feet, it just became a little bit too much. I would have either liked a wider uh, forefoot especially and or an upper that's more forgiving that would let my feet bleed out a little bit. And I wasn't really getting either. So the only thing that I could do, this is like a compromise where neither side walks away super happy. Hoka's want my feet to be narrower. I wanted to be wider. I just had to loosen up the laces as much as possible up front and then just cinch down a little bit over the top of the foot and I could find a happy middle. When I ran, I didn't really deal with any blisters or anything. I'm not really a blister person, so I'm not the best person to ask about that. So that worked okay. In terms of arch support, you know, neutral shoes, even neutral shoes really run the gamut between shoes that feel so cushy and mushy that the arch is fine, but just because this is just so soft that depending on how you're running, your feet will wanna cave or collapse in. I didn't find that with this shoe. There's enough structure in the foam and in the arch that for me, even though I'm a pretty neutral per, uh, person, I liked enough of it where, in all honesty, I didn't think about it. And if I'm not thinking about whether it's too much support or not enough support, it's probably the right amount of support for me. Now, I do preach the importance of running in multiple pairs of shoes just to give yourself that different response and stimulus uh, from running in said different shoes. But if I was going to choose one, this would be on my short list just because it really can do it all. And if you're in the market for a performance-minded lightweight shoe that is good for those longer runs as well as some days on the track and even runs you could do from a recovery standpoint, this would be a great shoe to consider. At 140 bucks, it's definitely in the price point and range you would come to expect from performance shoes these days, so definitely worthwhile. I think my only open question is, you know, the durability, how well these new outsoles are going to hold up for three to four hundred plus miles, uh, especially for a shoe that is so light. And again, my only knock with this shoe was just slightly narrower last and unforgiving uh, upper on top or some combination thereof. Just didn't give my, my feet as much room to spread out as I would have liked. And had that been just a slightly wider last, I think this would have been a total slam dunk for me. So. If you want to pair these shoes for yourself, go ahead and find the description um, of this video. And in there, there's a link to our good friends at Fleet Feet who sent us these shoes. They have a great support. You can even do virtual shoe fitting with them so they can make sure not only you get into this shoe and learn more about it, but get into the perfect running shoe for you. If you want to learn more about the difference between 
higher cushion shoes, maximalist shoes, minimalist shoes, and how they all combine together for your running and your mechanics, well, definitely check out this video playing over my shoulder. I'm gonna keep running, guys, and uh, filming and reviewing. I'll see you in the next video. Ugh, what is this? What am I saying? Nope, nope, that's not it. <laughs>